Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm going to be taking a look through my collection of vintage Ace and Ballantine paperbacks. Now, I don't have a massive collection, but I've got some really nice SF books which I wanted to share with you today, including some lovely Ace doubles. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start with is this one, D94. So, uh... It's a double, an ace double, which was their little gimmicky trademark. Um, they did publish a lot of science fiction and crime and other genres, but the ones I've tried to pick up are predominantly science fiction ones, although I've got like an odd crime one, which we'll see in a minute. So this is D94, One Against Eternity, A. E. Van Rock, and uh, Murray Linster here, the other side of here, more like the other side of the book. And... Uh, this was printed um, in 1955 as an ace double and uh, beautiful, aren't they? Absolutely fantastic piece. So uh, uh, they don't often turn up in the UK and when they do, they're usually like this one in a bit of a state. So uh, this is one that I've picked up over here. In fact, it's got the little bit, you can just sort of see uh, an address in Folkestone there, which was on a label, which someone's torn off. Um, but this is a crime one. So it's got yellow and the, the science fiction ones had the blue. And uh, this is Prowl Cop, Gregory Jones. And on the other side, my private hangman, Norman Herries. Look at this. It was either the gallows or the goon. Well, I'd choose the goon, I guess. <laughs> this is a favourite of mine. Probably one of my all-time favourite American paperbacks. Um, so this side of it, not particularly that great. Margaret St. Clair, Agent of the Unknown. However, this side, a gorgeous... Philip K. Dick, look at this, The World Jones Made, for D150, and a beautiful painted cover there. Very, very nice indeed. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at the print and history of this one. Yeah, World Jones Made, copyright 1956. Lovely. That's it. This is D176, The Green Queen, Margaret St. Clair again, <laughs> The Green Queen. And then this side, Thomas Calvert McClary, 3,000 years. They slept for 30 centuries. Amazing. Here's another good one. This is uh, The Spaceborn by E.C. Tubb. Great, great cover, and this one's coupled with another Philip K. Dick, the man who japed. Lovely. This one's not in quite as nice condition as the other, the other one, the World Jones May, but still lovely to have. Here's one by Harlan Ellison. This is D four one three, A Touch of Infinity, by Harlan Ellison, and on the other side, The Man with Nine Lives, also by Harlan Ellison. So it's a an Ellison double. God, that would have been good to have got signed, wouldn't it? He used to do lots of shows as well. Lovely. Lovely artwork. So this one is uh, slightly later now, D437. And then the town took off, Richard Wilson. Coupled with the Sioux Spaceman, Andre Norton. What a lovely lovely jacket that one is as well isn't it? nice bright and vibrant still 35 cents although we are much later date wise now yeah we're up to 1960 so we've gone forward a few years let's slide those over that side got a few more aces to go through yet so this is 443 look brian aldis great author look, first book publication as well so this was a paperback original like a lot of these were Bow Down to Null, and the, the B-side, as it were, The Dark Destroyers. Oh, and that was abridged, it says. Manly Wade Wellman. Never heard of him. <laughs> David Grinnell, D-465, The Martian Missile. These are so cool, aren't they? Pawn of the Space Invaders. And that one's coupled with the John Brunner, The Atlantic Abomination. What a cover that is, isn't it? Look at that. Awesome. Now that's the last of my doubles, but I've got a few ace singles 
from this earlyish sort of period. So um, Space Hive by Jeff Sutton, which I got fairly recently this one. It came in in a very small batch of paperbacks that are in super high grade. So I'm very, very pleased with that one. Gorgeous cover. This one here, which is another absolutely fantastic crime one. A Mania for Blondes. Beautiful condition. Look at that. It's been imported, so it's got a little TP, one and nine sticker there. And that's the TP. It's like an Indian's TP. That's they were the importers over here, Thorpe and Porter. 1961. And my last of my early ace paperbacks is this one, which is a movie tie-in to Master of the World by Jules Verne. Includes Robert the Conqueror. <laughs> and this was also an import. It's a science fiction classic. Lovely. So that's my ace paperbacks. So now we move on to my Ballantine paperbacks. And once again, predominantly they're science fiction because that's the genre I do sort of collect, particularly SF anthologies. They're a real favourite of mine. But I have got a few others in here. Books by Jean, John Wyndham, Philip Jose Farmer, um, and also... Best American Short Stories, which was an annual anthology as well. So uh, a few of those to look at today, and I've got quite a nice collection of these. Although admittedly, I'm only scratching the surface with what's actually out there. Now this is my earliest one, Ballantine number 16. This is in their numbered series. Obviously Ballantine started a lot before that. So it's dated 1953. And Ballantine books basically were um, Ian and Betty Ballantine, who were very good friends with Alan Lane of Penguin fame. And they were running Penguin USA, or Penguin Inc. Um, and they uh, sold it back to Alan Lane for a pound and went on to form uh, Ballantine books in its own right. This is a great, great series. Martha, edited by Martha Foley, who did it, who edited it for the best part of 50 years or so. A big, thick books here, as you can see. And uh, they published one of these for most years, but not all years. And they did, Ballantyne did publish them into the 60s and I believe the early 70s. Um, I picked up three or four of these. And, no, I think it was three in one here, and then I found another odd one, which I didn't have. And they were... I think five dollars each from the States. Now they're quite heavy books. So I remember paying a bit to get them over, even when I got these, which was about 10 years ago. I really, really would like to get some more of these and we'll have a look at the other ones a little bit later. Um, if anyone's got a definitive list of what was released in paperback, I really would like to see that. Now here's the first of uh, the American John Wyndham's. So they didn't have Day of the Triffids. That was published by Popular Library, which I do have. So we'll show that in another video. Um, and it was released as Revolt of the Triffids. Um, Out of the Deeps is, of course, The Crack and Wakes. It's his second big novel. And this was Ballantine 50. And all they did was sort of, yeah, I said, just change the title. But the rest of it is exactly the same. Very, very nice edition of that it's the american these are all the american paperback firsts of Wyndham, which we'll see today um, this is their science fiction anthology series star science fiction great great list of names and uh as i said these are quite quite scarce over here but worth tracking down because they're beautiful the Ballantine books they're quite heavy paper and as you can see they're really really well formatted and i believe that that's um, a little rub off from the early American penguins, which were also of high quality, because that was one of the things Alan Lane insisted on. And the Ballantines carried that on um, with their own paperback imprint. And here we are then. Arthur C. Clarke, one of his very, very earliest ones, Prelude to Space. I'm not sure if they did charge it in, but they probably did do that one in Ballantine. Gorgeous, this. Very, very nice indeed. The Gnome Press, which was the original publishers with Ballantine Books, like in association with it. Very cool. Number 71 here, Heroes Walk, Robert Crane. An extraordinary novel of the future and one man's strange triumph. What a great jacket. Like a desolated planet or something. And on the back. So this is an original novel, not a reprint. 
on one of the pages slightly looser, but still 1954. And you do find that with the bindings of these Ballantines, the glue, because they are best part of 65, 70 years old now, some of these. Um, the glue has dried out in some instances and it's made them quite fragile. But uh, I try and protect them as best I possibly can. So this is a Ballantine 89. This is three short novels in the one book. There we are. From 1954. That's a beautiful copy of that one. Absolutely lovely. Edited by uh, Frederick Poole. Here's another very, very nice high grade copy of number three. Ten stories in this anthology. Look at this Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, Lester Del Rey, Philip K. Day. What Richard Matheson, what a lineup. Jack Vance. I mean, what a great lineup that one is. Look at this. Wow, we. That's good stuff, isn't it? Beautiful. Here we are. This is Rebirth by John Wyndham, which I believe is the Chrysalids. Um, although it doesn't say it anywhere on the book, but that's that's what this one is. It's the Chrysalids. There we are. Charles Hedden, a little advert for that one. We wondered if they'd done it. That was number 104. Now, 133 is the next one in the uh, Best American Short Story series it's by Martha Foley again. As I said, just great, great these. And I love, I do love a short story, don't get me wrong. And these are very much across many, many different subjects. Um, but they're just really good. And um, interspersed in these is just some fantastic stuff. So uh, it's a great, great series to track down. As I said, it's still going to this day. So, F-139 is The October Country. This is by Ray Bradbury, a very famous book here. Author of Fahrenheit 451, which sadly, there's the Ballantine edition of it. Sadly, I've not got that one. That would be cool. Now, this one's pretty ropey, but I've had it quite a long time, so I don't mind too much. But uh, where's the copyright on this one? 1955. Pretty cool. Here's another John Wyndham. So this is uh, Tales of Goose Flesh and Laughter by John Wyndham. Now I believe this was published in the US, in the UK as Jizzle. And it was a four square one. It's like a little anthology. And that this is, I recognise the titles. In fact, there we are. Look, the fourth book is titled Jizzle. And that's uh, what it was published under in the UK by Four Square. Here's the last of these. This is the the best American short stories for 1956. Oh no, actually, I think we've got one more of these to look through, but this is the third one. Once again, a fantastic, really detailed jacket. Some good, good names there. Absolutely superb. They, they list the one for 1953. Uh, then 1955, look, they don't mention if they ever published 1954. It doesn't look like they did. So uh, interesting, isn't it? So they didn't all come out as a Ballantine paperback, which is a bit of a shame. Here's a Jose Farmer, Philip Jose Farmer. This one's been imported. It's got a two and stick, two and six pence sticker on there. The Green Odyssey. Um, not a great cover on that one. We're still in the early 60s, I presume, here. But it says copyright 1957, although I'm certain that that... Um, oh, no, that would be right, because look, that was 1956. So about 57, that, that is right. We're still in the 1950s. Incredible. Star Science Fiction number four. Great original stories. Edited by Frederick Poole again. Great style. Look, nice condition, that one as well. Very, very nice. 1958 now. So these really, really were a little snapshot of the publisher from this um, mid to late 50s period. And this one is absolute minter. The Star Science Fiction number five. Look at it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Beautiful unread copy. 1959 now. 
got Robert Silverberg in there. Very nice indeed. We still got a few more to go through. Windham and Parks, the Outward Urge. I think they were one and the same, weren't they? they were part of his pseudonyms. Yeah, copyright 58, John Benyon Harris. Ah, here's the last one for the best American short stories. This is for 1959. As I said, I'd love to get some of the 60s ones because the design is very much of the 1960s. And uh, it would be lovely to get the whole run together and see you know, how the cover has changed over the course of the, uh, the two decades, the 50s and the 60s. Problem is, they're such big books. I'm trying to find them in nice condition. I've got to admit, I haven't looked for a while, but after filming this today, I think I might go online and see if I can find any at a reasonable price from the 1960s. Ah, oh, so here's my second favourite John Wyndham's after Triffids. This is my next favourite one. Um, it's uh, Trouble with Lycum. Now, I've not got all of John Wyndham. I think I've got one, maybe one more to show you, but there's a few I'm missing, um, particularly the Midwich Cuckoos, which I'd love to get the American first of that one. So that's one to go on the old once list. There we are. It looks like it was released as the Midwich Cuckoos over there in the States. But that's uh, Trouble with Lycan, I think, is uh, superb. Another Philip Jose Farmer, The Lovers. Great stuff. 1961 now. Here's another one, The Alley God, another Philip Jose, once again imported with a three and six sticker on there. Fantastic stuff. And then sadly, the last one, because I'd love to go through these if I had a few more. It is another John Wyndham though, and it's a later one, um, Chalky, which I believe was the last one that Ballantyne published. It's interesting cover, it looks like he's holding is that like a dna strand or something like that um this is an original publication not a reprint so maybe this is the original american paperback original 1968 so much much later but still part of the original ballantine imprint fantastic so there you go i hope you enjoyed that brief look through my vintage american ace and vintage Ballantine paperbacks. So uh, these are, as you can see, absolutely fantastic. Some gorgeous covers there. They're just superb. I think if I lived in America, these would be the sorts of labels um, and publishers that I would be collecting on a full-time basis because they're just so much fun. I just, I just love them to death. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed looking through those as much as I have, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing, if you're not already, for regular vintage paperback content, and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.